Hello and welcome back to another Teardown Tuesday. Today we're taking a look at a unique gas valve called a sit valve uh, that started showing up a couple of years ago, uh, 10, 12, 15 years ago. And it, it's not super common, but it is around. Uh, it's a unique valve in that it includes pilot safety functions. Let's start by going over what this thing is. So it's a sit. 630 valve. SIT is the manufacturer. And we notice right away we've got a maximum pressure 1 half PSI. Our outlet pressure looks like it was here at some point but might have rubbed off. It doesn't doesn't have anything there now. We've got a model number, lot number, date code, and a big notice here. Not field serviceable. So they're telling you they don't want this taken apart. Back on the back we've got another warning. Safety control valve not field serviceable. So they really don't want you taking it apart. Looking at the outside of it, we've got a couple different openings, fittings, ports, screws. We've got this interesting little clock screw set up up here. And when we look at the back, we've got this arrow cast into the body. So I believe that this would be our gas inlet. And when we turned our thermostat on, this would be our gas outlet. I think our thermocouple would connect here, and this is probably our pilot gas connection. On this side of the valve, we've got a couple different hex key screws. So these look like we could switch to use different ports at different angles, but I'm not sure what this one is. We've also got a screw up here, and I believe that that is like an orifice bleed screw, but I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to open that up and take a look. On the side over here, so where our pilot gas connected back here, if we follow that all the way up, we've got a screw on top, and we can probably assume that this is our pilot gas adjustment here. So this should be an interesting one. The valve was sent in by a field tech. Thanks for getting that sent in to me, I appreciate it. And this is a used valve, so I'm not sure what failed on it. We'll have to take a look as we go here. There are a couple of other screws here. There's some small adjustment screws down here. I'm not sure what these do yet, but uh, we'll find out here shortly. These may be like bypass screws. We'll, we'll just have to see. To begin, when we, when we look at how this thing is put together, we, we know that we've got a, a cap tube and bulb over here. So it's going to be some kind of bellows up under our, our mounting plate here. But our entire mounting plate is held in with security torques. So that's the, the regular Torx, but with the tiny pin in the center. And we've also got some of these coated. And you'll notice that down in there as well. So I think that'll be the, the start here, is getting these security Torx out, so we can get this top plate off. So we got the knob off, and this would be the, the knob that the user would, would interact with, would turn. And the knob was spring-loaded. You can see it's got little cog teeth on it that mesh in on our, our side control over here. There's also this plunger that it was interacting with. When you push the knob in, it would push that plunger down, so that's probably related to our pilot gas. Alright, so our knob came off here, we got all our Torx fasteners out, and you can see there's three different points that this knob interacted with. The first one is just a solid shaft, and this is what was threaded into with the fastener to hold the knob down. The, the second one is off to the side here, the little plunger. We can pretty safely assume that that's for the pilot, based on the alignment here. And then the last one is this little clock screw assembly here little cog gearing system that looks like it actually moves in and out as we increase and decrease. And you can hear it doing the snap action. So I'll be really curious to see what we find in that. So 
So that guy's got a little tiny hole drilled in it, and it's got a stamping on it. Looks like 100, 100. Not entirely sure how that relates to the rest of the gas system yet, but we'll get into it. We'll figure it out. Might have to pull that out once we get the plate off. So this top plate looks like it's being retained by this screw assembly. All right, so we had to back out this adjuster screw so we could get a better grip on this. And now that we've got that loose, let's try and get this all apart. Interesting. Not sure what we're looking at here yet. Looks like a plunger system with some grease on it that would go into... Oh, that's the bellows. I see what that is. Okay. Let's try and get this plate off now. We're being held, we're being held in by this pin here. All right, got the pin loose. That's just a more of a stud, a retaining stud. And there's our top plate and our gasket. And there it is. So there's our little diaphragm, our expansion. It's a different design than what you normally see. I don't know that I've seen one quite like that before, but it's very clearly like a little bellows. You can see the little folds. So as you heat this up, the bulb, it's going to expand the fluid that's inside the cap tube, and this whole bellows assembly will put more force out. So given that, it looks like what we're doing here is we're actually adjusting the pressure on the top of the bellows like that. And as we turn the knob, it turns this reverse threaded screw in and out. Increases and decreases the pressure on the bellows. So now looking down inside there, there's like a little plunger or a cup. Our pilot assembly system has a little C-clip on it here. We can probably pry that off pretty easily. Got to watch with these that they don't go flying off because they do have a tendency to shoot away. So there's the C-clip and the spring for the pilot assembly. And we should be able to get our pilot adjuster out now. Yeah. So there's our pilot adjuster. That was down inside here. And it does go all the way through. So our pilot connection is drilled down here all the way up through and pops out under this adjustment screw. So that is what that is. Here we had like a little ceiling surface, I guess. I'm not sure. Almost like a little rubber isolator. There's a lot of mechanisms still down inside this part of the valve that I, I don't see an easy way to get to yet. But I think we can pull more of this pilot assembly apart. So let's do that. All right, so I got that broke loose in the vise. Interesting. Very similar to what we saw in the uh, Italian gas valve a couple weeks ago. So there will be some kind of little coil down inside of this assembly. We'll play with that in a minute. So down inside here there's the, the plunger, the other end of this plunger up top. And I think we can feed this all the way back through now. There we go. So there's the little seal that our plunger came down through. 
So we had this part, the, the shaft that the knob was pushing on, uh, a small little spring there, and a, a cup assembly. Looks like there's a little check ball inside there. And that would sit on here like this. Looks like this is the sealing surface back here where this little rubber washer is. Looking down inside, down inside our pilot assembly, you can see that opening that goes through into this passage, but then the passage is capped with a port, or uh, the port is capped, so let's pull that out here real quick. Yeah. Nice cap, got a nice little o-ring on it. So you look down inside there, now you can see all the way through into our pilot assembly bore here. And then it looks like the gas path coming out maybe goes through this opening here and feeds into these side passages. There's something still down inside here. Let's, let's go in that direction next and see, see what's hiding in there. So again, a nice, nice cap. Now I see what they did. So they drilled a hole down through into this area of the valve. So it goes all the way down through. And you can see it goes pretty deep into the valve. And then they did what's called a spot face operation where they ran a machine tool in to just open up this little area and create this flat down inside. And when they did that operation, it created this gap into this part of the valve. So we're getting closer to figuring out the gas flow path here. You can just barely make out a spring down inside here. Let's get this other port opened up and see what's going on on this side. There is some kind of little shoe or valve component down inside there still. Probably comes out through the top here. Oh, geez. I guess that's why they say it's not field serviceable. So here's a little piece that shot out. I'm not sure how it was retained in there. I guess we'll figure that out here in a minute. But it had this really substantial spring underneath it, putting a lot of force on it. And then this one shot out too. guys can't see it but I do have safety glasses on here so that's, that's a good reason why you always wear safety glasses when you're taking apart a mystery component like this. This is a really different little assembly. There's a very small set of fingers down inside here like spring steel and then our little plunger assembly is loose in there. So it looked like that went like that. And this went like that. There's still some kind of lever arm down inside here too. It's a really strange valve. So when we look down in here, there's this little piston, and this piston pushed down onto this linkage arm, which is spring-loaded down inside here, and then this little linkage arm like rocks back and forth. It's a really complicated valve to manufacture. And there's a plunger down inside here too. You can just see the reflection of it there. We're not done yet though. Let's pull these out and see if these are maybe some retainers or something. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. Hopefully nothing else shoots out of this valve. That was a 
those are not coming all the way out. It's almost like they peened over the end here to prevent them from being removed. You can always cut that, but I don't want to cut it just yet. I'm going to try and figure out what we got going on here. Alright, I think I see what's going on here. I am guessing they have a retainer system set up so this little lever arm inside here holds this plunger. Yep, there it goes. What a strange valve. So we've got a very finely machined little retainer. Looks like it's also chrome plated. Very shiny. Drops down through this little spring bucket. Spring sits like that. And I bet when we pull this little lever out, it'll be forked to go around the side of that. Yeah. So there's how it was set up. And that style of retainer makes it really hard for it to come apart because we've got a stepped pin two different diameters on it and when we get to the small diameter we can slide the lock down but once we get onto the, the slightly larger diameter the lever's stuck. There's the other end of our spring retainer and then all the way down inside there is another little shaft seal with a very small o-ring. So there's a, a seal that went underneath our spring plunger here, our trick plunger. Oh. So there's our inlet screen for our incoming gas. There's still a couple more things hidden down inside this valve. It hasn't given up all its secrets yet. There's another screen, some kind of filter screen. We're pretty close here to having everything apart. We still have these two screws that won't come out because they're captured. But if you look straight down through, let's see if I can catch it on the camera, you can actually see where those would be going like a little flow path. So let's see if we can figure out the whole sequence of operations here. I got my handy Robert Shaw thermocouple, so let's start with that. Feels like it does not want to thread in. These must have their own their own thread for thermocouples. I'm just going to try and twist this apart and see if it'll pop. Well, it did pop. So this is the most basic electromagnet. You can see they've grounded one leg to the outside over here. Let's get really up close with this. So they've grounded one leg of it to the outside out here and the other leg goes down through the middle and becomes the button. So when we had our thermocouple on there and heated up that would become our electromagnet. We've got little iron cores there. And then on the inside, there's a very small little plate that you can see down inside there. And that plate would snap to the end of these iron poles and be held in. So let's run through our sequence of operation here on this very complex valve, as best we can at least. So on this side, we had our incoming gas here. Our incoming gas feeds over into this opening for our electromagnet. This guy set down here like that. And had this little sealing surface against that other little piece. So when you push down on 
the plunger, the plunger would push down, compress this, we light our pilot. So our pilot gas comes in here, is in this cavity. When we depress that plunger, it uncovers, you can just barely see it, there's a machined port down inside here. It goes down in this area of the valve, into that space down here. So the gas would come up into here, where we had that little filter sock, go through this little tiny hole, down into our pilot gas feed. So now we've got gas coming out our pilot gas feed. When we get enough heat into the thermocouple to continue to hold the plunger in, we let that go. This returns up to its home position, but now we've got an opening through the middle here. So when we let go, it actually just leaves our little cup on the plunger. So then we're able to continue that gas flow into the upper part of the valve here. There's another port drilled sideways here. So now that we have gas into this upper part of the valve, it's traveling through this opening here into this space. And it's just sitting until our thermostat system opens and allows it to flow back out this side. So remember our spring-loaded thermostat plunger set over here. So when that opens, it allows gas to flow out there to the burner. Now let's take a closer look at this. This was the, th the thermostat assembly. So we had a really strong spring. Excuse me, it's that one there. So we had a strong spring. And we had this entire assembly under tension. Had this little tiny plunger, and then we had this little lever action system down here. Well, that just barely opens when it calls. And that whole lever action system was actuated through this linkage. And we had this entire system sitting on top of that lever arm. So we had our adjustment screw, our expansion bellows, our little spring cup, and our lever arm. This thing is really complicated for just what it needs to do. So then when we wanted to adjust our heat setting, we were adjusting this little screw to increase the tension on our expansion, our bellows, which put more pressure into our linkage system, our little lever arm, which then translated to our little snap disc over here to open up when we call for heat. Uh, we were trying to figure out at the beginning what this screw with 100 on it was, and when we look at it now, the way it threads together in this assembly, it looks like it creates a flow restriction when it's installed. So it bottoms out onto this part of the valve and limits flow. So there's gas around the outside of this and our burner connection is actually that going down the bottom of this. So it's regulating continuous gas flow into this part of the valve when the valve is closed. So when our little plunger assembly is, is shut, it's still bleeding a little bit of gas down in there. You, you can compare this to the video where we did the teardown on the Italian valve. And the Italian valve did the same thing, but in a much simpler layout. All right, so let's talk about what principles we're using in this thing. So the, the big 
principles we have are the electromagnet on the pilot assembly. We talked about how that worked. Thermal expansion of fluid for our little bellows system here. We've got a number of different force balancing systems. So we've got springs and we've got threaded fasteners that apply or reduce torque or, or compression force. Uh, we've got a number of springs here that are, that are applying force in different ways in different places. This one doesn't rely on diaphragms, which is interesting. It relies almost entirely on mechanical forces back and forth. There would be some pressure differentials on some of these components, particularly the little spool here that cycles our, our main valve, our main burner flame open and closed. But it's an interesting design in that it doesn't use that, that big round diaphragm to actuate the valve open and closed. And failure. Man, there's a lot in here that can fail. When we look at what can fail, the, the first and most obvious one is probably this electromagnet, just because it's, it's going to have electrical voltage on it. It's going to be drawing current. If anything happens to any of these small little connections down inside here, you know, if somebody's banging a pot on the, the range and it, and it cracks one of these little solder joints, that's going to trash the whole valve. Uh, other things that can fail, seals. You know, we don't see a lot of seals going bad anymore, but internal seals could get brittle or hard over time from heat. Other things that could happen here is anything that gets in this valve could gum it up. So it would be very possible to have like an oil or, or a pipe dope get in here if it got through the inlet screen, so more like an oil maybe. You could gum up all the linkage and levers here. And then the last one, and probably the most obvious one, would be damage to our, our cap tube system. If our bulb or our cap tube gets damaged, our little bellows is not going to function anymore. And then we're done. Given the complexity of this valve, though, I see why they, why they don't want you to service this in the field. All right. Well, that was a good one. A lot going on in there. Thanks for sending it in. Appreciate it. And thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.